Today's biblical reflection is based on Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 to 9. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisar, son of Shapham, and Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom King Zedekiah of Judah sent to Babylon to Kim, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. This is perhaps a fairly well-known biblical passage, a letter from Jeremiah to the Jewish people living in exile in Babylon. Yet it's also a passage that makes a lot more sense when we take account of the context in which it was written. But before we do that, I should probably say at the outset just where we're going with this reflection. The point of it is to help us think about what it might mean to be a prophetic voice in relation to the climate and biodiversity emergencies. So, to the complexities of Jeremiah and his context, and context is always important. Jeremiah was born in the 7th century BC when the ten tribes of the one-time northern kingdom of Israel had been completely absorbed into the empire of the Assyrians. The two tribes of the southern kingdom of Judah were living peacefully as vassals of Assyria. They paid their tribute money and were left in peace. But as we know, nothing stays peaceful in that part of the world for long. By the time that Jeremiah had been called to his prophetic ministry and vocation, the Assyrian Empire was in decline and Babylon and Egypt were fighting it out for ascendancy in the region. It was messy and it was violent. There was a lot of politics going on. Where did the best interests of the people of Judah lie? Should they side with Babylon or Egypt? By 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was firmly in charge of Judah. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, tried to mount a revolution, but it failed. He was killed, and so the Jew Jewish royal family, led by Jehoiakim's son, went off to begin exile in Babylon, accompanied by all those skilled people and leaders mentioned in our reading. The Jews who remained in Judah continued to be mostly anti-Babylonian and within less than 20 years another large group had been shipped off to Babylon. Judah would be almost empty of Jews for 70 years. Now this is quite a context in which to be a prophetic voice. The passage we heard seems to come from the period between the two deportations to Babylon, when some of those in exile seem to have been thinking that they wouldn't be staying long. Jeremiah was listening hard for the voice of God in all this. 
He understood the exile in Babylon to be a punishment from God for the failings of the Jewish people. He said plenty of things that people really didn't want to hear. He was put in the stocks at the temple and beaten, and he was once thrown down into a cistern in the hope that he would die and thus be silenced. But he doesn't die and he doesn't stay silent. He writes directly to those who are in exile, in a place where they really, really don't want to be, and in a mess of their own making. He does not say, don't worry about it. God has a magic wand and will beam you up out of this mess in no time at all. No, he tells them that they will be there for 70 years. He tells them to accept the reality they find themselves in and not to be miserable about it. They are to build houses, plant gardens, marry, have children and to seek the welfare of the city for in its welfare you will find your welfare. And when they do all that, God says in, in verses that we didn't read this evening, I will bring you back. For surely you know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. So if we now look at this passage through our newly acquired green spectacles, what might it have to tell us about being prophetic voices in our own context? Well, there's still a, a lot of politics going on in the world with individuals, nations and ideologies seeming to jockey for positions of power, with consumerism in the ascendant, with the realities of climate change and biodiversity loss already wreaking havoc in some parts of the world, with the suffering of human and other than human animals apparent all around us. The first lesson from Jeremiah might be that we need to accept the reality. Like the Jews in exile, we find ourselves in a place we would rather not be. And God is not going to wave any sort of magic wand to extricate us from the mess of our own making. To help others accept the reality we may have to say things that people really don't want to hear. And they may respond by, well, I'm really hoping not to be thrown into a system, but we may not be very popular in some quarters if what we say threatens established patterns of living and the powers that be. And yet, also like Jeremiah, we are not prophets of doom. What does he tell people to do once they've accepted that there is no quick fix, no quick return home? He tells them to get stuck into the reality and make the best of it. Build houses. We might say well insulated ones with electric heating and climate resilience in mind. Plant gardens with pollinator friendly plants and trees. Plant loads of trees and please don't chop down the old ones because they will feed us in so many different ways. Continue to have children. Some younger people are really scared to do that just now. And teach them to seek the welfare of the city or the town or the village on this side of the globe or the other. Teach them to seek the welfare of the rainforest and the ocean and the air we breathe and the welfare of all the amazing creatures with whom we share this common home. Our prophetic voice is not one of doom, but of hope, of deep and active hope, grounded in the assurance of God's love for all that God has made. Amen.